Hey there, Aries. Welcome to your reading for June 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading. Yes, please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below, including the readings that I offer. Yeah, so read through that and just let me know which you would like to move forward with. If you do have trouble deciding, please still email me. We'll chat about the situation a little bit and then I will help you decide. Yeah, so... Please keep in mind that time is, an uh, time is an illusion, energies are fluid. So this reading, just like all of my readings, are meant to be timeless. Yes, whenever you see this or whenever it resonates for you, that's when it is right for you in that moment, okay? Regardless of when it's actually coming through. Keeping true to form, we're starting with the Golden Universal Tarot for the freestyle spread. If you are interested in a reading with me and you're new to the channel, welcome. But you're about to get a, fl a, a, a look into the flow of how a freestyle reading with me works. You won't actually be able to see the spread because I'm keeping the camera face to face so we can have a conversation. But if you were to get a private reading, the camera would be focused on the cards and that way you'll be able to see. But otherwise, you can get a, uh, an idea of how this reading flows. It really kind of works really great for just about anything. Yeah. And then at the end of the reading, I'm going to still um, pull some Oracle guidance. But this month, I decided to get a new deck uh, and it is the Sacred Rebel Oracle. I love this deck. Like, I resonated with it so much. But also the, the messages that have been coming through for this month are crazy spot on. It's nuts. Okay, um, I think that's it. So let's just get into this, Aries. I do have a bit of a pre-shuffle here for you. The first card that came out in your pre-shuffle is the tower. Um, and then after that, you had the Wheel of Fortune and the Nine of Wands. Underneath the deck is the Five of Pentacles. Now, there's some sort of shakeup going on here. Um, Aries and you know knowing Aries energy you might be the one actually also the, the wheel of fortune is kind of saying this to me but you might be the one that's stirring up this drama that's around you right now but it doesn't feel like you're being spiteful no it's for very real reasons says the wheel of fortune and it's not even like you really want to be involved with this nine of wands. It's giving me an energy of like, oh, shit, here we go again. Like, God, fuck, like, damn it. Why does this always have to happen? But it's not you. It's, it's not you that's creating the situation. You're setting the record straight here. And that's why the tower is coming out. Now, there, are some, there is some sort of energy of feeling rejected, feeling out, left out in the cold, feeling abandoned, or feeling alone. That's either you... Yes, Spirit is saying, for the most part, mo you guys are feeling that way, um, and it's pissing you off. Like, y you know very well that you don't have to feel this way. The fact that whatever this situation is around you is making you feel this way is pissing you off. I can feel that. Or at least you're just not happy about it. You're doing your best to not feel that. But then what I really am getting is, like, this energy is really coming from the people around you in which they're kind of having their asses handed to themselves. <laughs> and so they might be, this might be a reflection. Like they, they may be trying to, 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 to throw their energies of deflection or deflect their energies of feeling rejected um, or left out in the cold or whatnot, what, abandoned or whatnot on you. But it's not yours to bear, Aries. It's not. And you're just kind of going through the motions like, yeah, whatever, I've been here before. Um, it'll settle out eventually. All right. Whew. Okay, Aries, um, we'll see. And it's interesting because um, I just did the Pisces reading and there was some troubling energy there too. And, you know, it doesn't surprise me that they could... You, I mean, you two are right next to each other, you know, in the Zodiac, so... It doesn't surprise me. And even last month, there were similarities between Aries and Pisces, which also makes sense. Like, like look at it this way. In, in Eastern astrology, my Venus is in Pisces and my sun is in Aries. So it would make sense. And, and I'm, I'm just saying that to say that, you know, look at your charts. It, 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 that's why things are just, things are f constantly flowing. I don't even know where I'm going with that. But I think, I think most of you get what I'm trying to say here. All right, Aries, let's just, let's just get into this and see what we've got for you. All right, here we go. Hi, 
Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of June 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Aries, I'm giving this three shuffles for you, and I'm seeing an orange, a red, reddish orange energy for you, which is just, that's just saying that you're just keeping your fire going. You're staying strong. You're staying, staying confident. You're staying you no matter what anybody has to say about it. You're not letting anything steal your passion or your zest for life, which is a good thing. Perseverance, that nine of wands energy. Perfect. Last shuffle here, Aries. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus for the month of June 2019 or whenever this resonates for you. Yep. Boop. All right. Overall energy, Aries. Oof. The Eight of Swords. Caught between a rock and a hard place, huh? For some of you, this is because... You know something's not right. There's some sort of injustice happening around you, but it's almost as if you're powerless to do anything about it right now. Or, or the advice here is not to get involved, to allow this to work its way out naturally. Wow, you might really want to watch the Pisces reading, but the, the, the yeah, Aries, Aries, chill. You have to, you can't, you can't do anything about this. And that's why you're in this eight of swords energy. Cause you know, you can't do anything about it and you want to like some of you, I'm, I'm starting to get really aggressive, feel really aggressive. Like some of you really want to fuck some shit up and teach some people some lessons. But you see, that's the thing, Aries with the wheel of fortune that came out in your pre shuffle. You don't have to worry about that. The universe has that under control. Meh. Be wise about this Aries. The chariot, yep, see? There's that kind of aggressive energy or that energy that just wants to move forward and set the record straight so that y'all can get back to what, doing whatever it is you need to be doing. But you need to let this happen in the interim. The, the, you could be dealing with cancer. You could have cancer in your chart because the, the, the chariot does represent cancerian energy. Um, and actually, there may be a cancer around you that is a, good, a very good friend of you that might be sharing some of this energy of like wanting to either fuck some shit up or move forward. But the chariot also talks about keeping your balance, keeping your emotional balance, which for you, Aries, in this situation would really bode well for you. You see confirmation. It would really bode well for you. That was a really strong, conf you, I, that was something falling off, a little trinket falling off one of my speakers here, okay? But you need to keep your emotions in check, Aries. Don't go popping off out the mouth with, at anybody. Like, this is not the time for that. I understand why you might feel like you want to do that, but that is not going to work well for you. That is only going to make the situation worse. And you probably are in a place where you're looking pretty good right now. So you just need to, I, yeah, you just need to keep your mouth shut. I love you guys. Underneath the chariot, you have the eight of cups. Some of you may just want to walk away from this situation altogether. Yeah, and underneath that is the Four of Cups. Okay, for some of you, part of why you're in this Eight of Swords energy is because you're really ready to just walk away completely. There was a missed opportunity here, unrequited love, but I'm kind of feeling like the missed opportunity is on the part of the I want to say the cross watcher, meaning not the Aries, unless both of you are Arians, but I, mm, take it as it resonates. But forever, whomever I'm talking to here that is definitely feeling like you're in this eight of swords energy and you're needing to keep your emotions in check. The you're on, you're not the one that has missed out on this opportunity. The other person is. Maybe you do feel like you have missed an opportunity and you kind of want to like set the record straight or like tell somebody about themselves. Maybe tell somebody about themselves as to why they've missed the opportunity. There's a lot of aggression here, Aries. 
I'm hearing, I am sick and tired of being treated this way. Which is why you kind of want to walk away. But at the same time, you have this eight of swords energy that's like, no, I'm not just about to walk away without giving you a piece of my mind. I don't think that's wise right now, Aries. There might be something that you're missing in this situation. There might be. I don't know. Let's see. Let's get into the rest of the reading here. Um, so you can look at this as the first half and the second half of your month. I recommend that you just look at it as the first half and the second half of your reading. Energies are fluid. Time is an illusion. So like at any moment, any of these energies, uh, energy, any of these messages could come through and apply to something that came out before it in a different section. You know what I mean? So whatever. But hey, if it resonates as the first half and second half of your month, just take it as it is. I don't care. Whatever. Do what's best for you. All right. Getting into the first half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you, Aries. You've got... There it is. Right there. Temperance. Patience. 1111. Patience, Aries. There is something that you're missing here. Or there's just something that... Um, you, I'm, not, I'm hearing not seeing eye to eye. And that could be where um, a little bit of your temper is flaring up, Aries. You might need to work on seeing the situation from someone else's point of view, regardless of what it is. Like, I already feel your resistance. I already feel it. Like, no, fuck that. Like, they're, they're doing some shit that's just, like, fucked up. I don't need to see it from their point of view. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You need to see it from where they're coming from, Aries, regardless of how fucked up it might be. There is a reason why it's happening this way. And what temperance is saying here is the universe is trying to get you to help you to understand that. That doesn't mean we're excusing anybody for their actions that are inappropriate or childish or whatnot, whatever. That, there's, we're not trying to make an excuse for them, says the universe. But Aries, we're trying to get you to understand that there are more ways to see this than just one. Yours, right? There are, other, there, are, there are different ways of seeing this other than just the way you see it. So you need to have patience with yourself and with the situation in order to allow these differing of perspectives to come forward, okay? Temperance is coupled... You could be dealing with a Sagittarius too. You could have Sagittarius in your, in your chart. Temperance is coupled with Three of Pentacles. There is definitely a sense of self-mastery here, but also teamwork. You have to be willing to work with others. I know you're a very independent individual. You're the, you, are the, you are the first of the Zodiac. You are number one, okay? So you represent the individual, the I. All right. But there's, there are billions of other I's out here. You are not the only one. So you have to learn to work together. Regardless of the circumstances, I just wanted to call you Pisces. Regardless of the circumstances, Aries. It's so funny. It's so funny because Pisces was coming out of a situation in which they were too giving. They, they bend too much. But Aries, you're in a position where you don't bend enough. Like, you refuse to bend at all. And so it's like the universe is trying to take both of y'all and like bring you to like a, a level, a center. <laughs> All right. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aries. You've got the Knight of Pentacles. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow down, Aries. The Knight of Pentacles is coupled with death. Yes. Could be dealing with a Scorpio, could have Scorpio in your chart. But death here is saying that things are in fact transforming. Woo. You just have to be patient with it. And as, as, as I was trying to pick up this temperance card, it kind of like flew out of my hand. Y'all need to learn to be patient. I know how hard that is. I do have Aries in me too. We all have. I mean, we have everything basically, but some for some of us, obviously... Certain energies are stronger than the other, but we still have everything. Just like we both, we all have both masculine and feminine energy. We all have all the energies of the Zodiac within us. Okay. But I officially, like, according to the, well, no, both charts, I have Aries energy 
in, in major placements. So I get it. But this is li literally the universe is teaching you how to take it slow, take it step by step, and is teaching you how to learn to work with others. And yes, I'm saying it that I'm saying that correctly, teaching you how to learn to work with others because you can get a sense of it. But within each within any given situation, you are going to have to learn how to work with those people. Like, say, you're 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 coupling up with new or partnering up with new sets of people within any given circumstance. You're going to have to learn to work with those individuals. So you might have you might be able to build some sort of baseline and like teamwork, but then you're still going to have to learn about the group that you are now a part of if it's like a new group each time. You know what I mean? So that's okay. Great. All right. Fine. <laughs> Moving forward. Your challenge in the first half of this reading here, you have the nine of swords. Yeah. Anxiety. Oh God, why do I have to deal with this? Come on, Aries. This would be just so much easier if I could just do it on my own. Shut up. Shut up. Learn to work with people, damn it. <laughs> I love you guys. I'm not trying to be an asshole. But I get it. I used to say that shit all the time. Look, you, you know what? Just leave me alone. I'll do it by myself. No. No. Yes, there are some cert cert there are certain situations in which you're going to have to do it by yourself and you'll flourish. That's great, but that's not everything. At some point, you're going to have to learn to work with somebody. You're going to have to learn to work together. Okay. Okay. Nine of Swords is coupled with, whoa, the Ten of Swords. Shit. This is the final hurdle. This is like one of the last major situations that you're going to have to deal with in this, in this circumstance. Like, like this is... For a lot of you, this is kind of like the final lesson, which is why it's so challenging. Okay. Just get through it, Aries. You can do it. Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Aries. You have... Ah, the Knight of Cups. There's that compassion. There is you melting a little bit and saying, okay, well, if you need help, I'll help you. Or, okay, I'm willing, willing to let someone in and accept help. Some of you need to accept or ask for help. But the Knight of Cups is representing compassion here and empathy. Knight of Cups is coupled with the change in perspective you are needing, the hanged man. So what this is saying here is you are in a situation, you are in a position where your point of view is being forced to change. And your heart is being encouraged to lead the way. Now, some of you have intentionally put your heart in a bit of a cage because you don't want to get hurt. I understand. But spirit is saying, the universe is saying, that's not the way to go about this, kid. You've got to live with an open heart. Obviously, you have to protect yourself, but you got to change your perspective in what being open-hearted truly means. And that's what you're working through right now, okay? Some of you have really been hurt in the past. I totally get that. Learning through the contrast is what spirit is saying. Okay. You've, you've got, you, you got here, you got hurt. You dove into that side of the spectrum. Now we're trying to get you. Okay. Well, wait, now you're diving in the other side. Okay. 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 Come back and center. There it is. Happy medium. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> second set of, oh, I'm sorry. Second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies. You have the Empress, abundance, love, compassion, understanding. This is literally the universe wrapping you up in a nice down blanket and saying, it's okay, honey. You'll be all right. This is Mother Gaia saying to you, well, yes, this is hard, sweetheart, but it's challenging, but 
You always have me here to help you get through it. I love you. I'll show you the compassion that you need, but you got to get through these lessons, honey, okay? The Empress is coupled with, yeah, the Five of Cups. This is literally that nurturing motherly energy of the universe, but also most specifically, I'm seeing this is coming from Mother Gaia, helping you deal with the heartbreak, the resentment, the loss, the, the guilt, the shame, whatever. Nurturing you back into good health and happiness, regardless of what you may have lost or what you may you feel like you have lost, okay? Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aries. You got the three of wands. Excellent. Excellent. So there is an energy of once you are able to kind of like, you know, pick your head back up, dry your eyes and like look at, I know some of you are kind of like, I'm not crying. Stop it. Yes, you are. And if you're not, you need to allow yourself to do so. Okay. But dry your eyes when you're ready. Pick yourself back up. Stand up strong and recognize you have been on the right path, going in the right direction the whole time. And then here goes Mama Gaia. See, I told you. I told you. <laughs> You'll be all right. Just keep going. Because you're going in the right direction. Three of Wands is coupled with King of Swords. Holy shit, I have been going in the right direction the whole time, haven't I? Huh. Okay. So what I learned from this? And how do I apply that to the future? Like, where am I going now? Checkpoint. This, is, this does feel like somewhat of a checkpoint here. Once you actually look at things as objectively as you possibly can, then you're kind of like, whoa, oh, I get it now. All right, so where do we go from here? Excellent. That feels good. That feels very good. Ownership, taking responsibility, standing up for yourself. That feels great, Aries. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, four of swords. Good. Take a break. Rest, meditate, recuperate. Dive into these energies, these comforting, swaddling energies that the universe, but more specifically Mama Gaia, is trying to help you with and really heal. Really work on integrating the change in perspective that you're gaining here, the hanged man. That I do see the Four of Swords as a minor arcana version of the hanged man, okay? So this is about taking the energies that Mama Gaia are trying to help you with and then using that to really integrate this lesson and really heal and like work on, you know, refreshing yourself before you have to dive right back in. Four of Swords is coupled with Yes, the Wheel of Fortune. I told you. Yes, guys, your challenge in the second half of the reading here is to allow yourself some time to heal and let the situation integrate. Let something complete. I'm seeing, I'm kind of seeing the Wheel of Fortune as a timer here. Almost as if, you know, when you're baking a cake and you set, I'm, I'm, I'm literally seeing an egg timer. You guys remember those egg timers? I used to love that thing. I don't know why. It's just, it's very nostalgic for me. My mom had one. And we had the same one for years. I'm going off on a tangent. Anyway, I'm seeing an egg timer. So it's like there's a cake that's in the oven that needs just some time to bake. But then... Once you bake it, keep in mind, like once you take it out of the oven, you still need to have some more patience because it has to cool before you can ice it or your icing is just going to be a big puddle everywhere. Right? Okay. Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Aries, you have, there you go, the Ace of Wands. There's that inspiration to move forward. I'm hearing for some of you in a completely different direction, but it doesn't, it's not, it's not necessarily a completely different direction because ultimately it's, all, it's the path that you're meant to be taking anyway. So it may look like it's a radically different direction, but actually it's still the right direction for you to be going in. Yes. Ace of Wands is coupled with, ooh. The Two of Cups. Well, shit, I didn't see that coming. This could, we could be talking about a romantic partnership.
you guys might be learning how to come together with someone and not always take the lead, not always be in control, not always be the domineering one. Wow. I did not see that coming, Aries. Neither did you. Touche. <laughs> okay. Now, for some of you, this could lead you on a path towards... Um... Okay. For some of you, this could be leading you on a path towards uh, rec uh, 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 connecting with someone new. This also could lead towards some sort of reconciliation. Like whatever is happening here, either during the month of June or just during this time period in which this resonates for you, there was, in fact, uh, a missed opportunity. But where is it? There it is. All is not lost. The Empress and the Five of Cups. All is not lost. But I mean, it doesn't have to be with the Empress for this to mean this, but the Five of Cups does say, regardless of what you might be grieving or mourning, all is not lost. And looky here, Aries, the Three Cups spilled, but you still have that Two of Cups behind you. And everything that's going on here could be leading to some sort of reignition of a relationship, a romantic partnership, a realignment potentially. Here's the Two of Cups again. And if, it's, if this is not a romantic relationship, this could be a balancing act. I, 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 it's either a balancing act between the masculine and feminine energies within you, okay? Or this is some sort of reconciliation that is allowing you to be a better team player, okay? All right. Wow, Aries, damn. Okay, getting into your oracle message here now for your month of June. Closing out your reading here, Aries. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. One last shuffle here for you, Aries. You know, part of what is so frustrating about this situation for you, Aries, is that you very much feel like you know exactly where you're going, or at least what you want, which is making it so easy for you to just be like, fuck it, I'll just walk away. But then you have the Eight of Swords here where it's like, damn it, I can't just walk away. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get it. I totally get it. All right. Let's get into this Oracle message for you. For my Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus to close out this reading, please, Spirit. There it is. All right. Card number 43, come to life. Another, uh, another sign. Oh, yeah. Another sign got this too. I don't remember which one, but this is actually, I feel like this is a pretty long one. Some of these can be really long. Yeah, this one's like three pages long. So just bear with me. You don't have to listen to the whole, the whole message if you don't want to, but I'm going to read it just for anyone that may resonate with it, okay? Here we go. Actually, give me a second. I want to drink some water really quick before I do this. Bear with me, guys. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Card number 43 come to life. You are the most sacred of all sacred artworks. You are bringing yourself to life now, and this is how it must be. Of course, something big, I'm sorry, something being essential doesn't mean it will always be easy. You must support yourself and have courage during this process. Your monkey mind is not to run the show, or in other words, your ego, yeah? It might have a lot to say, and at times it seems very convincing, but it is not the one in charge. Your mind can inspire you with ideas. However, it is the real you that speaks through your rebellious, sacred heart and is living your life, not the monkey mind. 
The mind is not much more than a swirling cacophony of habitual reactions. Beneath habitual thoughts, there is a deep, sensual, creative, and energetic awakening happening to you. It is so far beyond what the mind is now capable of controlling. Others might not like it because it shakes things up. Coming to life tends to do that. However, it is happening now, and the only real choice you have to make is how to deal with it. Coming to life means feeling. You might bring, it might bring joy, but it could equally bring sadness, rage, or fear. It could bring all of these and more. Feelings will come and go quite swiftly when allowed to flow. You might need to paint, write, enact ritual, sing, or dance your feelings to help keep the energy flow. Don't hold back. Create the space for yourself to do it. In this process, you are uncovering the artistry of the universal creator. You are honoring the sacredness of life by exploring it without restraint, and that includes the flow of your feelings. You don't have to do anything with them other than express. You might want to analyze, or you may not. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you are getting in touch with feeling. Learning how to access your feelings allows you to learn how to access your intuition, creative inspiration, and genuine internal guidance. These aspects flow from the same place and are often couched within your feelings in the form of emotions as well as physical sensations. The journey underneath the mind and into a sensual emotional connection with your feelings, emotions, and body is for a sacred purpose. It is a part of your path. You are one of the sacred but powerful minority that have chosen to come into a body and live consciously within it. That may seem like it applies to everybody, but when you experience it for yourself, you will realize that this is actually rather rare. There are plenty of bodies without a spirit really residing within to care for, love, and honor them as a sacred animal. Fortunately, this minority is powerful enough that it can keep human, human culture in balance, but only just. We need every single one of us that is capable to be aware of the task and move beyond the mind and into the body. This is especially so if you have drawn a certain card that we have not drawn. <laughs> to come into your sensuality, you will need to anchor your experiences. You may be blessed with relationships that are conscious enough to be interested in your journey in a constructive rather than controlling or undermining way. If so, talk, converse, share. If not, then you will need to be more resourceful in how you support yourself through your awakening process, at least until you attract some more conscious connections into your life. It is likely that these connections are already on their way, just because you are working with the energy of this oracle deck. You can support your own process by scheduling time for yourself and keeping to it like you would the most important date with destiny. So get to writing in your journal, do your dances, Paint your pictures, create your creations, be kind to your body, listen to it, and let it be alive. Even in times of pain, know that there will be ecstasy and bliss as the process of healing and awakening continues. The, the message of this oracle is, be alive. Don't imagine you can go back to sleep. You are too awake for that now. There is no falling back into old ways. If you do so, it will be short-lived and won't feel the same as it used to. You may grieve this. You will certainly, eventually, celebrate it. You have crossed the threshold from what an old way of, I'm sorry, you have crossed the threshold from an old way of being into an, in an old life, and try as you might, you cannot return. It is better to let it go. Grieve if needs be, celebrate if needs be, or do both and move on into this moment. There is another adventure awaiting you now. You have, or you need a deeper connection to your own instincts, body, feelings, and intuitions so that you can receive this new calling. You can trust in it too. Embrace it and it will embrace you. So there you have it, Aries. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. With that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic June, and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of July. Yes? Take care. Mwah! Bye!